Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside. Hi, everybody. This is Linda. And um, I've really been wanting to do this video for a long time. And I don't want anybody to take any offense to this. But um, this is the truth. And and we call ourselves or we've been labeled truthers so why don't we tell the truth and this is about the Pledge of Allegiance and who wrote it and why it was written so I'm going to go straight to that right now and I will leave links um, before I go there let me tell you a little story um, my uncle left the reservation he, um, he was a full-blooded Cherokee Indian and he went into World War II and he was injured and he couldn't read or write. Um, by the time he came home he could read and write and he also learned every Native American language in, um, in America and First Nations and he also learned Hebrew, Latin, Aramaic, um, French, German, uh, Spanish, um, uh, Goodness, I mean, there he could speak almost every language I know. Um, I think he even learned some um, of the Far East languages. Um, he he became an amazing man. He he was the biggest influence in my life, and he thrived on reading, and and and, and knowledge. Um, but he still walked the red road. But he thought that there was a lot of things corrupted, and that a lot of people just. Uh, blatantly did things because it was supposed to be patriotic and so I'm going to tell you about the Pledge of Allegiance now and um, since I just told you about my hero my uncle so um, he did him and my aunt did raise me so here we go um, you're not going to be able to see this so I'm going to read this and I'm going to leave you a link um, Francis Bellamy uh, he was born in 1855. He died in 1931. He was a Baptist minister, and he wrote the original pledge in August 1892. That's after the Act of 1871, which made America a corporation. He was a Christian socialist. In his pledge, he is expressing the idea of his first cousin, cousin Edward Bellamy, author of the American Social and Socialist Utopian Novels, Looking Backward, and that was in 1888, and Equality in 1897. Francis Bellamy, in his sermons and lectures, and Edward Bellamy, in his novels and articles, described in detail how the middle class could create a planned economy with political, social, and economic equality for all. The government would run a peacetime ag economy similar to our present military industrial complex. It's not sounding so good, is it? The, pub, pl the pledge was published in the in September 8th issue of the Youth's Companion, the leading family magazine and Reader's Digest. Now, the, both of those should send red flags up right now. Uh, it, well, oh, excuse me, and the Reader's Digest of its day. Its owner and editor Daniel Ford had hired Francis in 1891 as his assistant when Francis was pressured into leaving his Baptist church in Boston because of his socialist sermons. A member, as a member of his congregation, Ford had enjoyed Francis' sermon. Ford later founded the liberal and often controversial Ford Hall Forum located in downtown Boston. In 1892, Francis Bellamy was also chairman of a committee of state superintendents of education in the National Education Association. As a chairman, he prepared the program for the public schools. Quad Quadricentennial celebration for Columbus Day in 1892. He structured the public school program around a flag raising ceremony and a flag salute, his Pledge of Allegiance. His original pledge reads as follows I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. He considered placing the word equality in his pledge. 
but he knew that the superintendents of education on his committee were against equality for women, African Americans, and Native Americans, and anybody else. That's not written on there, but I'll tell you that's how it goes. Dr. Mortimer Adler, American professor, oh, excuse me, American philosopher, and last living founder of the Great Books Program at St. John's College, has analyzed the ideas in the books, the six great ideas. He argues that three, the three great ideas of the American political tradition are equality, liberty, and justice for all. Justice mediates be between the often conflicting goals of liberty and equality. In 1923 and 1924, the National Flag Con Conference, under the leadership of the American Legion and Daughters of the American Revolution, changed the pledge's words from my flag to the flag of the United States of America, and we would, should say corporation at that point. In 1954, Congress, after a campaign by the Knights of Columbus, added the words under God to the pledge. The pledge was now both a patriotic oath and a public prayer, and that's against the Constitution, the sixth, um, I believe it's uh, Article 6 of the Constitution. You cannot have... Um, uh, the United States have anything to do with religion because and, and the reasoning behind that was the separation of church and state is because they feared that we would become a theocracy and, and, and my, I, I feared that we are becoming a theocracy our founding fathers wanted to keep this separate and in 1954 those words were added which just pretty much bammed anybody who had a freedom of religion now had to say a public prayer to God and then so you just kind of with that you know kiss some of your your uh, first amendment away which they've been trying to do you got the Ford Foundation Reader's Digest the Youth Campaign and it was written by a socialist Bellamy's granddaughter said he also had resented the second change he had been pressured into into leaving his church in 1891 because of his socialist sermons. In his retirement in Florida, he stopped attending church because he disliked racial bigotry he found there. What follows is Bellamy's own account of some of the thoughts he went through his mind in August 1892 as he picked the words of Pledge of Allegiance. It begins as an intensive commuring with salient points of our national history from the Declaration of Independence onwards with the makings of the Constitution with the meaning of the Civil War with the aspirations of the people the true reason for the allegiance to the flag is the Republic for which it stands well, that sounds very good and what does the vast thing the Republic mean it's the concise political word for the nation, the one nation which the Civil War was fought to prove. To make one nation idea clear, we must specify that it is indivisible, as Webster and Lincoln used to repeat in their great speeches in future. Just here across the temptation of the historic slogan of the French Revolution, which went, meant so much to Jefferson and his friends, liberty, equality, and fraternity. No, that would be too fanciful for too many thousands of years off in realization. But as a nation, do stand square on doctrine of liberty and justice for all. I, I will agree with that part of it. Um, if the pledge historical pattern repeats, its words would, will be modified during this decade. Below are two possible changes. Some profile av advocates recite the following slightly revised pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, born and unborn. A few liberals recite a slightly different version. But the whole point is, when you added under God, and I know a lot of you say, well, it should have God in it. Well, then you just need to wipe your First Amendment off. Because, like I said, Article 6 of the Constitution said we are not to be a theocracy. And that each person had the right 
to to pray to whatever God or whatever they believe, be it a glass of milk, in the confines of their own home, it was private. It should have nothing to do with state. That's the reason it was separate. So I just wanted to put a truthful meaning on the Pledge of Allegiance, and that's just the short history. That's not even the whole thing. It even goes deeper into the education and the kind of indoctrination of the young people to always keep them in... Um, what do you call that allegiance no matter how many wars we go into no matter how bad of the wire tra tappings we do we make sure those kindergartners or um, as soon as you get in school learn that pledge of allegiance you know you if and, and I'm going to say this if you're a Christian your allegiance to be, should be to your God not to a country that wages war on behalf of another country, which would be the Zionist Israel, um, I would think that you would pledge your allegiance to your creator, not to a country. Um, I mean, this is a world created of all different kinds of people, and this world belongs to all us human beings. And I actually think countries are becoming a little bit silly, because if it wouldn't have been for empires, we'd probably all be getting along. Um, but that's my point of view from my heart. I do love everybody, and I have nothing against the Christian religion. I don't. I just think we should follow and obey the original Constitution. If you people really want to repeal the Act of 1871, that means you have to follow the rules of the Constitution of uh, pre-1871, and that is keeping church and state separate. Um, and I love you all. And I hope I didn't upset anybody by putting this up. And remember, a socialist for the Ford, for the Ford and Reader's Digest is the one who wrote this. So, um, and very liberal. So you just keep this in mind. This was planned for the youth, and and the youth ended up being what our grandparents, our great grandparents, um, our parents, and us, and our children, our grandchildren. I never said the Pledge of Allegiance. I really don't know all of its words. So um, anyway, I love you all. Peace, love, and truth. And please take no offense. Please don't troll me on this. It is just what it is, the truth.